Hello, this is Virtualist the Chess Noob, learning and having fun with chess. Today I played a couple of great games against an Italian opponent on chess.com. My new Italian friend played the Rui Lopez opening in game one, and it was a tough battle lasting almost 60 moves. However, he ultimately won the Rook and Pawn endgame. We played a second match with Reverse Colours, and he played the Sicilian Defence. This gave me an opportunity to play one of my favourite openings, the Grand Prix attack. I've had pretty good luck with the Grand Prix attack, and it helps me simplify the otherwise complicated opening of the Sicilian. Please enjoy! Okay, so let's start with the review. So as you can see, we were really, really balanced uh, throughout much of the game. So both myself, my opponent, are duking it out, staying, um, you know, neither of us really having much of an advantage until suddenly um, a blunder of my opponent's part, and then I sort of uh, had a sort of commanding lead afterwards. And if you actually see, like my opponent actually had more best moves uh, than me, so I had sort of relatively more highly accurate moves, but also had some more inaccuracies, but that one blunder made a difference. So let's have a look at the analysis. So in this second match against my, my opponent, I had the white pieces. As usual, I played e4, and uh, they played c5, the beginning of the Sicilian defense. And against the Sicilian defense, I play the Grand Prix attack. So that starts with knight c3, so entering sort of the closed Sicilian. Now they chose to play d6, and the Grand Prix attack now begins with f4. And I've had you know, reasonably good luck uh, with this uh, with this move, um, with this opening. So. At the moment, very equal, they played knight c6, uh, and one of the ideas in a Grand Prix attack is to move the bishop to either b5 or potentially uh, c4. So c4 might be the more flexible move because you also exert pressure on the weak f pawn, but in this occasion, because the opponent played uh, d6, there's, a, a, there's an opportunity of pinning that knight to the king. And in that situation, basically I keep it pinned until uh, there's an attack or they, they can unpin the knight and then trading the, uh, the bishop for that knight is often good, at least in the sort of the, uh, the ideas in the Grand Prix attack. So they immediately unpinned with bishop d7, so I captured the knight and they captured back with bishop. So uh, basically equals slightly better for black at this point. Now knight f3, uh, they play e6, and I thought that um, my understanding of the position was that d3 is probably best, but I also thought, look, there seems like there might be an opportunity for actually a fairly aggressive expansion into the center. So that's uh, defended two times over. I end up developing my queen as well. I thought that might be interesting. So that's what I played. I played uh, d4. So yes, yeah, so d3 is better, um, but you know, not a massive difference between the two. I expected they would capture, uh, and that's what they did, which was not the most optimal move. Uh, and I captured back here with queen. Opponent now plays queen b6, and I thought here for a little while, so obviously they're offering a queen trade, but I didn't think that trade was good for me, because then I sort of give up um, sort of the a file for the opponent's uh, rook, and I wasn't sure I really wanted that. And I thought instead, if they capture, queen captures queen, if they do make that move, I can capture back, and then I've got another attack on that bishop. So I thought that was probably better for me. So I thought, look, probably I should think of developing instead. Uh, for a moment, I thought about this, but wait a minute. Of course, the queen is also attacking the b2 pawn, so that wouldn't make sense. So in the end, uh, I opted to just short castles. So I thought getting the, uh, the king out of there now that the queen's sort of roaming around in the center, then you know, obviously they may not end up trade, we may not end up trading queens. I thought that was still probably good for me. How about they did trade queens uh, and I capture back. So look, basically equal again. I'm going to attack on the bishop. Uh, they thought, nah, I'm not going to move it. But I thought that bishop was actually pretty active uh, and, you know, exerting some pressure uh, into my center. Uh, I thought, let's whack it. I thought that was better for me, and uh, basically equal, basically equal. At this point, I thought I'll push f5, 
um, because I thought that transformation was potentially good, or you know, if they capture, I could always sort of move the move the rook up. Either way, I thought that was potentially good, and I'm trying to develop. I have more space. The opponent plays d uh, knight d4, so you know, ostensibly there's an attack here. Uh, so I had to think about what I should do about that, but I thought, yeah, I could just simply put the uh, put the rook up to uh, the second uh, the second. Uh, rank, uh, that protects uh, that, uh, you know, next move, you know, the, the, the knight doesn't really have any good places to go, um, so that's what I did here, and they move their knight back. So effectively lost a move, lost some tempo, while I got a, um, got a chance to develop. Um, here I was potentially concerned that they might try to move uh, into this uh, direction, so I played a3. Actually that wasn't a good move, that wasn't really a risk uh, in fact. Uh, an opponent plays knight e5, which is a good move, because here they've got a potential fork of my rook and bishop. And again here I thought for quite a while uh, in terms of uh, what might be the best move. So some possible opportunities, I saw this after I made this move, this is probably the best move because there's a potential um, you know, fork of the king and and uh, king and rook there, so that's, so that's potentially pretty good. Um, but what I ended up doing was a straight up capture because if they chose to make that move I would have another uh, capture here which would then come with check. Uh, and you know, I assume they would, um, and, and at that point it'll be sort of uh, even defended by the rook, so they can't even capture, uh, can't even capture back uh, easily. So I thought that was pretty powerful. I thought that was pretty good for me, and that in fact I think does stop that move. So, uh, so yep, so that made sense. Now I need to make another move. At this point, I saw, I saw this, and if we look again, still fairly equal, slightly better for my opponent, and this is where my opponent makes the error. So to block. Uh, the knight move onto c7. The best move for the opponent was to, uh, to, to um, I suppose, embrace the fact that the king is in the center of the board and the king is an active piece and to defend the c7 square with king. So I think that is actually the best move. Uh, now you, you also connect the rooks, the rooks can potentially develop. Uh, obviously with, uh, with the loss of that pawn, the king can't castle on this side already. Um, but instead they play perhaps a more human move of dropping the bishop back. Uh, and yes, that does stop the knight from entering that square, but this pawn is now straight up hanging and that even comes with check. Now I saw that I could take right away, but I thought maybe it would be better for me to, um, to use an opportunity to develop the rook first, uh, which is what I opted to do. Uh, and the opponent plays uh, knight uh, c4, which I don't think was their best uh, was their best move. In fact, it makes it a little bit worse uh, because now I still have that move, uh, and I also capture their only active piece left on the board uh, while at the same time activating my rook. So I thought this was a really good transformation for me and plus four. And at this point things are looking pretty strong for me. So opponent uh, now is forced to move the king anyway, because obviously can't castle this way, there's no real possibility of castling this way either I think. Um, However, I've got, I uh, can set up a sort of potential discovered check while also defending my, my rook. Uh, opponent plays a good move, I think, uh, with, uh, with, the, uh, with the rook attack. Now again, here I saw that I could probably just do a discovered check uh, and then could capture the rook, but you know, the king could come here to defend and all we're doing really is just trading pieces. Um, so instead, what I opted to do was to defend the bishop with pawn. Um, so apparently that wasn't the best move, Stockfish liked that other move better, however this gave me the opportunity for the opponent to make a make the wrong move, because you know here involves um, an active decision to trade the rook for bishop, hard decision to make, uh, however now I can simply capture the hanging pawn which comes with check, uh, there's no pawns left defending the king, no, there's an attack here, I've got the bishop here, here, so things are looking very very dangerous for my opponent, and here they opted to resign. But good game, GG! My opponent played really well for much, much of the game, but came undone with one bad bishop move. When I reflected on this game afterwards, there are a few strategic insights. 
there is a risk with keeping the king in the centre. Although my opponent's position was perfectly okay immediately prior to the bishop move according to Stockfish, slightly better in fact, the tolerance for error became less and less. What I mean is that anything other than the top one or two engine moves gave a substantial advantage to me. Computers might be able to navigate this, but this becomes increasingly difficult to play as a human. The king becomes an accessible target, and checks are forcing moves. Also, keeping the king in the centre creates a risk that the game could progress such that it is no longer possible to safely castle to either side, as was the case in this game. On top of the issue of king's safety, it means that the rooks might be difficult to develop. This doesn't mean that castling at the first possible instance is good. It sometimes isn't. However, as a general heuristic, a general strategic notion, getting the king out of the centre when there is a battle in the middle of the board is more likely to be good than bad, especially at the beginner intermediate level. Interestingly, evidence of the strength of my attack is that at the point my opponent resigned on move 23, all their pieces were forced onto the back rank, and all their remaining pawns still on their starting squares. Although I was only up one pawn of material prior to the final move, the computer evaluation was over plus six. I hope you found this game interesting, and thanks for watching!